Welcome to the broadcast, our second broadcast from Cedar Rock Church in Jackson, Georgia. For our church members, we are so glad to have you that are live with us this morning. For those that will be joining us later, we welcome you. And for those that are not members of the church, we welcome you as well. Hope you are having a blessed day. It is a beautiful day in the Lord and is a day that we can rejoice and be glad in. Even in the midst of all that is going on, we can rejoice in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's an amen right there. Real quick, by way of announcements, um, we are working or we have set up a YouTube page for the church. So if you know someone that is not on Facebook but would like to watch the service, they can go to Cedar Rock Church Jackson on YouTube. Go to youtube.com, go up to the search area and put Cedar Rock Church Jackson and these messages will be posted on there. On the day that we uh, record them, we will get them posted, hopefully, by the end of that day. Uh, also, for those that are not on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we are still uh, recording with DVD, and so we can get a DVD copy if you would need that. Uh, we want to begin, hopefully, this Wednesday and prayerfully to start up our Wednesday night Bible study again. And we will do that by recording. We will probably pre-record it and then post it Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. And so we will continue our study in the book of Mark. And I believe that we'll be beginning in Mark chapter 6, hopefully this Wednesday, March chapter 6. We need to open with our Mark chapter 6, rather. We need to open in a word of prayer. And this morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want us to particularly remember our doctors and our nurses and those that are on the front lines, our paramedics and firefighters and our police officers, those that work in the jails, uh, those coroners, the uh, medical examiners, all of these people that are dealing with this. And you know, some of our hospitals, the doctors and nurses are absolutely overwhelmed. And not just here in Georgia, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world. Uh, many of these are just overwhelmed with the things that are going on. Um, I just uh, read of one nurse in Italy this past week who was working in the epicenter in Italy where all these deaths has occurred, and she was so concerned that she was going to get the virus and share it with other people that she committed suicide. Folks, that is just not necessary. We have one greater than this disease, and his name is Jesus Christ, and we need to trust in him. But that helps us to see the uh, overwhelming stress that our doctors and our nurses and all of our first responders and all those that are involved in this uh, have to go through. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's just lift them up and remember them as well as our world leaders and the other things that are going on today. Father God, we just come to you today, Lord. We thank you so much for the blessings that you've provided for us. We thank you for the day that you've given us, Lord God. And again, it is a day that you have made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, the world is in turmoil right now. Each and every government is unsure of what to do. They have people dying. They have this disease that is spreading, and they're not quite sure exactly how everything is working with it. But, Lord, nothing is beyond you. Help us to trust you today. Help us to strengthen our faith in you today, Lord God. And, Lord, as we said a moment ago, we lift up today those doctors and nurses that are on the front lines and those paramedics and firefighters, police officers, the jailers and and uh, our, our federal agencies, Lord God, and, and even our coroners, our medical examiners, Lord, any that, that deal with this on a first-hand basis, Lord, we lift them up to you today, Lord. We know that uh, they're working long hours and they're overwhelmed and they're busy and many are not getting to see their families or they're concerned that when they do see their families that maybe they'll be passing this disease on to them, Lord God. And so we pray for them, Lord God, this morning. And ask that you would strengthen them. Pray that you would strengthen their physical bodies this morning, Lord God, that you would strengthen their minds, that you would strengthen their spirit, Lord God. And I pray for those that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that through this again, Lord, they would come to know you before it's everlasting too late. God, again, bless, help us, pray for our governments, Lord God. We pray for our leaders from the, uh, the cities all the way up to our federal government and to the worldwide governments, Lord, those in each and every other country, that they would make the right decision. 
they would lead and guide their people right, Lord. But we pray they would seek you out in doing those things. God, we pray that you would bless now the reading of your word today. And that you would open our hearts and minds to receive that that we need to receive from you today. Lord, we need a word from you today, God. We need a touch from you today, God. And I just pray that you would help us as we know you will. And we ask it all in the blessed, the holy, the most precious name, that name above every name, the name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen. amen. And amen. If you have your Bible today, and I pray you do, if not, go get it real quick. And for those that like to take notes, get you a pencil and a piece of paper and turn to the New Testament, to the book of Romans, chapter 3. The book of Romans, chapter 3, as we uh, go um, here to the reading of the Word in just a few minutes, and as we look at the Scripture and the message that the Lord has laid on my heart today. Romans chapter 3, and I will read the passage of Scripture in just a few minutes, but I want to give you the title of the message today, and the title of the message today is The Greatest Pandemic. The Greatest Pandemic. You know, we hear this word pandemic tossed around quite a bit today, and many of us have uh, may have listened to the news and said, hey, what does this even mean? We've heard throughout history about pandemics, but what is a pandemic? And so I looked it up, and the most basic definition of pandemic is a disease epidemic that has spread across a large region, for instance, multiple continents or worldwide. And of course, we've had many pandemics in the world. We don't know how many things have it come through the world before we they begin to keep in 1918 of the Spanish flu where there were 17 million to 50 million deaths. And of course we heard of the H1N1. And then we have the flu that comes through every year. And of course there's been tuberculosis that has run rampant over time. And many of you that are older remember when polio ran rampant over time. And of course there was smallpox that ran rampant over time. And so there were all these diseases, all of these problems, all of these situations that have happened and millions of people have died throughout all of these things. But let me tell you today that there is one disease that tops all of these things and it is passed from person to person. It is passed from generation to generation. And it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter where you live in the United States or you live somewhere else in the world. It doesn't matter what you think. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone that has ever existed in the world, with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ, has sinned. They have committed sin, and many have died without accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, and they have gone to the one place that sinners have gone, and that is a place called hell. Now, I know many of you today may be saying, Brother Greg, why in the world are you preaching on sin? We're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of a trial that the whole world is being affected by. And we need to hear words of peace. And we need to hear words of comfort. Why in the world would you preach on sin? But folks, if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there is no greater comfort in the world. There is no greater peace in the world than knowing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. If you know him, it doesn't matter what pandemic comes through. It doesn't matter what disease comes through. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you can have what Christians call that peace that passes all understanding. The Bible talks about that peace. It tells us that there is a peace that we really can't comprehend. You see it often in many Christians, especially in our older Christians. It doesn't seem to matter what comes, whether it's disease or sickness or trial or tribulation, no matter what happens, they always have this peace. They may begin to worry a little bit. They may begin to wander a little bit. But oh, all of a sudden, they are washed over with a peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. And once that peace hits, they no longer worry. They no longer stress. As I said last week, they repeat that passage of Scripture. I know whom I have believed in. And they're persuaded that he is able to keep 
that which I committed unto him against that day. In other words, unto the day of calamity and unto the day of trial and the day of tribulation, I know whom I have believed in. And his name is Jesus Christ, and I can trust him today. Amen. Even in the midst of this storm. Again, the Bible says all have sinned. In Romans 6, 23, the first part of that uh, verse tells us about sin. It tells us that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Oh, let me tell you today, if as many people were afraid of standing in judgment before the Lord Jesus Christ as they were of this disease, this COVID-19, boy, this world would be a different place. If people only realize that this disease is nothing compared to those that don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord and one day will stand before him in judgment, and once you stand before him in judgment, there is no second chance. There is no turnaround. You can't say, I want a do-over. There is no do-over. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. So, folks, we live and we die, and then judgment comes. And the only way to get by that judgment, the only way to be accepted by God is to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Right. It is the only way. Oh, if we had fear in the proper place today. Many may ask, well, where did this sin come from? Many ask today, where did this COVID-19 come from? And you may have heard a lot of talk about patient zero. We're trying to find patient zero. Who was the first one that got the disease and spread it? And then here in the United States, they say, who was patient zero? Who got the disease and spread it? But long before this disease came, the Bible tells us there was, in fact, a patient zero. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So the Bible tells us there was through one man that sin entered the world, and death through sin. Now I'm not going to read it today, but you go back into the book of Genesis chapter 3 and you read about the fall of mankind you read about Adam and Eve partaking of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and then realizing that they were naked and then being cast out of the garden of Eden now I know some people may say well why in the world did God cast them out and all this sin come to us because they ate a little bit of fruit well let me just tell you right here it didn't so much have to do with eating the fruit it had to do with they violated the command of God they were in paradise had everything that could be given to them and yet God said just one little thing do not eat from this tree. Y'all, look at all the beautiful fruits you have. Look at all the food you have. You have everything you ever, ever need, and you have me. Don't eat the fruit. And yet they ate the fruit. They violated the command of God, and that is why sin came into the world. And with that sin came death. We have death today. We have disease today. Why? Because of sin. In Romans, I believe it's chapter 7, it says that the earth groans and travail. Everything we see today, the tornadoes, there was one in Arkansas last night, uh, the, the hurricanes, all of these things, the tidal waves, the tsunamis, this COVID-19, all the crime that happens, all of these things are all because of sin, because people violated the commands of God. And so because they violated that command, sin entered into the world. And so when we're born into the world, we are born into sin. King David himself speaks of this. In Psalms 51.5, he says, Behold, 
I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Now he is not saying here that his mother committed some type of sin. Uh, and, and because of that that he was born. But he is recognizing the fact that he is born into sin. And when he had children, his children were born into sin. When you have children, your children are born into sin. Just as you were born into sin. You were born with that sin nature. And that sin nature will cause you to go to hell unless you know Jesus Amen. as Savior and Lord. Now the Bible also gives us in Romans chapter 3 here some symptoms of the disease. Now it gives us generalities here that we'll look at today. If you want to see some specific things, oh, the Bible has plenty of places there. I would just address you in one place to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It gives more specific symptoms, but here we're just going to look at some generalities of the symptoms of the disease, the greatest pandemic known as sin. Again, if your Bible's still open, begin reading with me in verse 10 of chapter 3. Paul here quoting several different Old Testament passages says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now back in 23 it says, For all have sinned. Here Paul says there is none righteous. There is none that is in right standing with God. If you tried to go right now to the throne room of God and stand in your own merits, you would not be able to stand for him in righteousness. The book of Isaiah says all of our good works as it comes to us trying to have our own righteousness apart from God are as filthy rags, as filthy rags. There is nothing we can do to earn our salvation. You cannot be good enough to get saved and go to heaven. You can't do enough good works to be saved and go to heaven because there are none that are righteous, not a single one. In verse 11, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Folks, we do not seek after God. When I was in the world, before I got saved in 1993, and again, most people know I grew up in church, and yet it was 1993 when I got saved. I was living in the world. I was lost and undone and on my way to hell. But one day, one day, Jesus came looking for me. I didn't go looking for him. I liked my sin. I wallowed in my sin like a pig in slop. I didn't think about God. I didn't think about heaven. I didn't think about salvation. Oh, but one day Jesus came down and he said, Hey, Greg, I want you to be with me in the kingdom for eternity. Amen. And he brought me under conviction and I got saved. And you may say, Whoa, well, he's never spoken to me like that. He will. He probably already has and you ignored him or didn't recognize him because the Bible says I would that all men would be saved. All of mankind would be saved. There's a desire that all would come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. But none seeks after God in their sin. Verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. In other words, they are all turned away. Go back to Genesis chapter 3 and read later on when Adam and Eve sinned. The first thing they realized was they were naked. And what did they do? They hid themselves. They made some fig leaf clothes. And then they heard God coming, walking in the cool of the day. And they hid themselves. They turned away from God. Instead of running to him and falling on their faces and said, God, we did what you told us not to do. Would you please forgive us? They turned away from God. They turned and they ran from God and tried to have their own righteous. But again, there is none righteous. Right. They turned away just as those that are in sin today turn away from God. They're not interested in God or the things of God. They are together, in verse 12, become unprofitable. They are rendered useless. In our sin, 
we are useless. We can do nothing good. But God doesn't want us to stay that way. I think just the other day I was getting a plastic bowl out of the dishwasher and as I began to get that bowl out to use it, I look and there was a big crack in the side of that bowl and it had opened up just enough that I knew that bowl was no longer good for what it had been made for. It was useless for what it had been made for and so I ended up having to throw it away. There are bowls that are cracked and clay pots and things and what happens with them? Sometimes they are cracked and that crack can be fixed. It can be repaired. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all Amen. sin. The blood of Jesus Christ can repair those cracks. Now a moment ago I said you're useless. I don't want anybody to lose hope in that statement because if you come to know Jesus, oh, he has something for you to do. He created everybody for a purpose. God did not make any junk. Right. But he can't use you for the purpose he intended to use you for because of the sin in your life. That's what I meant by useless. You are of value to God. You are of value to others. Jesus loves you. He wants you in the kingdom with him for eternity. He wants to use you for the thing that you were made to be used for, but you have to know him. Right. And you have to get saved. You have to be washed in that precious blood. Isaiah 118, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Oh, he can cleanse you. He can repair you. He can fix those cracks. And he can take a vessel that is unworthy and he can make it worthy. But he is the only one that could do it. You think of what I understand is the most famous and expensive violins ever made, the Stradivarius. And I know nothing about those things. I have just heard the name. But I imagine when the person that invented or made that uh, instrument was alive, if you had one and it was damaged, you didn't take it to anybody else to get fixed. You took it to the one that made it to get fixed. I can't fix you. Other preachers can't fix you. Your spouse can't fix you. Your children can't fix you. It is only Jesus Christ that can fix you today. Amen. If you just come to him today, he stands and calls with arms wide open and says, Come, come unto me. I am waiting. Would you come today? Let's continue reading. They have altogether become unprofitable. Verse 12, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. When we're in our sins, we do no good. When it comes to salvation, again, there is nothing we can do good enough to earn. Their throat is an open, open sepulcher. In other words, an open grave. If you've ever been around an open grave, there's nothing but a foul stench that comes out of it. Go in the book of James and read about the tongue and how wicked the tongue is. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. I've mentioned this in church several times. When we were kids, you used to say, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words can never harm me. But that is not true. Words can do greater damage than sticks and stones. Oh, right. many people have been hit with a stone or hit with a stick, and their injuries have recovered, but people have been spoken to harshly with language that you never recover from. And so just like the poison of an asp, which is one of the deadliest snakes in the world, so too can that tongue cause damage that one can never recover from, except again through Jesus Christ. Verse 14, whose mouth is full of cursings and bitterness. We see this today. There's so much bitterness in the world today. 
Because so much of the world doesn't know Jesus and they're not interested in the things of God. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Look at the crime rates in the world today. People without natural affection, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Unloving, unholy, only concerned about themselves. The way of peace they have not known. So many seeking peace today, and yet they refuse to find it in the one place you can find true peace, and that is in Jesus Christ. And finally, in verse 18, it says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. And that's or Jeffrey Dahmer, or Son of Sam, or any of these other serial killers or mass murderers out there. Oh, let God stand them up and put me next to them, and I look pretty good. And you're right. You would look pretty good. I would look pretty good. But they are not the standard. You can take the worst sinner in the world, which is Satan, and you can stand him up. And oh, boy, you'd look uh, white as snow compared to Satan. But he is not the standard. The standard is Jesus Christ. He is the one that you'll be compared to. And when you're compared to him, you are filthy. Amen. You are dirty because he is the only one that is pure and clean. He is the standard. Right. And you have to know him. If you've studied your Bible or read it all in the Old Testament, when it came to a sacrifice to cover sin, it had to be a perfect sacrifice without spot, without blemish, without error. The Bible tells us for our sins to be truly forgiven, there had to be one without sin, without spot, and without error. Uh, and his name is Jesus. He came and lived a perfect life. Lived without sin and died on a cross shed his blood so that we would have the opportunity for salvation. The Bible says, you all have heard this, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says, well, it says we need to repent of our sin. If you don't know him today, you need to cry out to him. Right. There is no coming and shaking a preacher's hand. There is no just filling out a card. There is no saying, well, I'll just go say that little prayer and give me some hell insurance and go on and live my life. No, you repent of your sin. You turn, and that means more than just being sorry. Somebody can be over beating somebody to death, saying, I sure am sorry I'm doing this, but they really don't mean it. But when we mean repent, it means that you stop and you turn and you move away from that. Right. And you don't go back to it. We repent of our sin. We turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, save me. I am lost and on my way to hell. Lord, save me. You are the only way to save. Oh, and the great thing is you don't have to do it in church. You can do it where you're at right now. Right. You can do it anywhere. Today is the day of salvation. If God is dealing with your heart today, talk to him today. You say, I don't know what to say. Just talk to him. Right. Lord, I recognize you are the only way. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot get to him any other way. There is no other Savior. There is no other religion or person or anything that will get you saved. It's only through Jesus Christ. Right. He alone is the way. He is the only cure for the greatest pandemic of sin. Listen to the second part of Romans 6.23. Remember 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Oh, but the second part says the gift of God. Listen, did you hear that? The gift of God. You don't have to work for it. It's a gift. Amen. The gift of God is eternal life through 
Jesus Christ our Lord. It is the gift of God. The gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me read you one more passage of Scripture and we'll close. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. It says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You see, you don't have to clean up your rack before you get saved. He died for the ungodly. He died so you can come to him right now. Maybe you're drunk right now. Even in your drunkenness, you can come to him. Maybe you're on drugs right now. Or maybe you're knee deep in your sin and you hear this, but you can turn from it. You don't say, I need to get sober first. I need to clean up my act first. No, you come to him just as you are. Amen. And you get saved. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen again, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You want to escape the judgment of hell? It is through Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. Verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We have now received the payment for our sins. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you have received the payment for your sins. It is through the precious blood of the Savior. The greatest pandemic in the world today, it is not the flu. It is not COVID-19. It is not whatever disease is going to come next year or the year after that or the year after that. The greatest pandemic is sin. Amen. But the cure has already been given. There needs to be no searching for it. No. You just need to accept it. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior today. Don't wait. Don't say, oh, maybe I'll do it tonight. You may not have. If you don't know him today. If he's dealing with your heart today. If you're under conviction today. Oh trust him dear. Let him save you today. He wants you to be with him soon. Trust him. Get saved. Have your sins washed away. Lord, we just come to you today again. We're thankful for this day. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here to record. We thank you again for technology that allows us to get this message out even though we can't gather together. Bless us now, Lord. I pray that maybe someone doesn't know Jesus. And through this message today, they would come to know you as Savior and as Lord. I pray for church members that maybe have been out of church for a while or maybe their hearts have been tested through what is going on now that they would have strength. And know, God, that you are with us and you've promised never to leave us and never to forsake us. Strengthen us today. Go with us now, Lord, even though we can't gather together, we can still be light in this dark world. Help us to share your message with everyone that we can over the phone lines or text messages or over Facebook or YouTube or whatever medium we can get the word out. Let us do that today. Help us, Lord. Bless us in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with us next week. Be here with us next week, rather. I have one more message, at least, on sin. Lord willing, I will be preaching next Sunday morning. May God bless you this day.